I don't know what to do with this coffee and not spill it. But that's not a safe spot. Where's the furthest from electricity? That's, I think this. Anyways, I have no idea if this is too bright or too dark. Obviously the plants are getting enough light, but is my face getting enough light? That is the question. Whew. I tried recording this video in the past week because I've been doing many plant-related things, mostly repotting and hanging plants on my ceiling. Well, some of them you can see, some of them, most of them you actually cannot. I don't think that came out right. I was gonna do a repotting to repot several of my Hoyas, like 20, <laughs> and I really did that, but unfortunately I was just not in a great mood for talking, so it's just, you know, camera pointing down at the plants and there's nothing else happening besides me, you know, quickly repotting plants. I am going to repot a Hoya today. I wanted to leave more than one, but I think I only have one or two that I want to repot. We will see. And I'm going to make some hangers because I wanted to show you that because I'm, I'm loving these hangers that I made. I'm looking at them. They're everywhere, obviously, because when I do something that I like, I do it everywhere. I just got another Mars Hydro light. This is the light that I purchased with my own money. There is a light here up that you cannot see. I purchased that one with my own money. It's a TS600 light. And Mars Hydro is the sponsor of several of my videos. They did send me a grow tent and a grow light and a new grow tent and a grow light should arrive in April, I believe and I will put my Hoyas in that. That's all fine and well, but I really like the light and I was looking to buy some light for outside of the tent so I can replace my regular LED lights because I just don't love them as much. Obviously the grow light is higher quality and also with regular LED lights, there is this buzzing noise when you turn them off that drives me <laughs> mildly insane. So, you know, all of that is not an issue with actual grow lights. TS600 is the cheapest one they offer, and because I'm a cheap person, <laughs> I did choose the cheapest one. Now, I don't really know if it's going to be enough for the plants. It is a 100 watt non-dimmable light, and that area here, it's not, it's not very small, it's not very big either. I think it's just about enough for the plants on the sides, which again, you cannot see, but I'm gonna try to put a B-roll, and I'm not really sure if it's gonna do for the plants on the wall. If it doesn't, we're gonna figure out something for that. But anyways, the reason I'm trying to arrive to a place here, the reason why I got this other light is so I can put it here in other spot that you cannot see. There are many things in this video that you cannot see. Oh wait, I need to sneeze. I would, that's not part of the video. Come on. Oh, you sneaky bastard. It's one of those when you think you're gonna sneeze and it's right there and it just passes. I'm going to unbox this light. It is their 2022 series of TS600. In my Millsbo cabinet, I have TS1000 and that is the prior to 2022 version. It's the one with silvery sides and they're very thin. It's like thin aluminum or whatever. I'm, I'm not really into metals, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, this one is white. It's sturdier, so I don't think I would be able to hack it for my Millsbo cabinet. I don't know if they changed any, anything except that. I actually think they put more LEDs or they are more packed in the corners because that's usually the dimmest part of the grow light. So, I don't know, that's all I know, I, don't, I didn't really look. And it's also one of the most affordable actual LED grow lights. I'm just not even cutting the tape. So we're gonna see what's in the box. I don't know why I said it like that. Also, another thing I wanted to say, I'm clearly replacing my old LEDs, my regular LEDs with grow lights. There's nothing wrong with using regular LEDs. They're not gonna input as much light and I can see that this area is brighter than it was. I previously had, I think three or four 36 watt LED lights. I think it was four. It was three. It was three. But anyways, those LED lights are about 15 euros here, just the light. And then what you need to do is you need to buy the cable, the plug, and several other things that will help you connect the light. So I think usually, it's around 20 euros for one light when you add up all the additional cost. 
So when you take three of those, that's 60 euros. This is around 90, I think. So it's not that big of a difference, I think. And I think it does a much better job lighting that area. Obviously, if you're just replacing one, it's maybe not going to be as profitable. It's not profitable. I'm thinking of another word. You may not save as much money, but again, it works for me, so that's why I'm using it. I'm gonna shut up now about why I chose this LED light. Calm down. And let's see if everything, I, I have no idea, maybe, not, maybe it's broken and I don't even know. I'm gonna totally use this box to pack some plants. Okay, so this is a very simple light and a simple packaging. You get some instructions, which I'm not going to read because no reason. You get the clips that will help you hang the light, some nice bubble wrap that you can use to pack plants if you're trading cuttings, and the light. Okay. And some foam. Basically, this is what the light looks like. It's just plain white. I think it does look a bit better than the one in the past. You can remove the sticker if you want to remove the sticker. Um, but you can see that the LED chips, I think you can see if my camera will show it, you can see that in the corners they are more tightly packed. So that's nice. And I think this time, I don't think my old LED light, the TS-1000 had the coating, but this one definitely has a coating. You can kind of see it reflects there. So that's great. Um, I think it's a like water resistant or something like that. Anyways, that's the light. I will hang it a bit later. Possibly I will insert some footage right now so you can see how it turned out. And I think now it is time to repot a Hoya. This is where my hanging Hoyas are. And that is what the light was for. You can see that's the new light that I, I unboxed. Actually, you probably cannot tell because they are the same. This is the light I got a couple of weeks ago and I loved it so much that I decided to get another one. But you can see how close the plants are to the light. They're not very far away and I do think that these on the sides are getting, in fact, enough light. Plus there is the window, so that helps a bit. It's a northwest facing window. The only plants I'm not really sure about are on the wall. I may need to get some additional light. That looks darker on the camera, but it's actually not. It's much brighter in real life. Probably something to do with the exposure, but they are in fact not as dark looking. The leaves appear much brighter in real life. And the new light that I installed is right here on the opposite side. And also there are some plants on the wall. Interestingly enough, these look brighter to me than on the other side in real life. There is a rogue philodendron micans here that, um, ended up here but again the hoyas to the side i think are receiving more than enough light now the issue is will the ones on the wall receive enough i guess only the time will tell but this is definitely not the finished setup i will make a tour of this part when the setup is finished i am back with my plant I'm going to repot this Hoya obovata. It is the variegated Hoya obovata. It's not necessarily time to repot it. I mean, it's kind of matted there, so looking forward to that. I want to move it from semi-hydro to a different potting mix. Now, I have been slowly transitioning most of my plants from semi-hydro to more regular potting mix. Some of them are in pond. I really found it difficult to maintain larger pots with semi-hydro. I did have quite a lot of issues with root rot. It wasn't slowing down the plants, but I just, it really made me not like it as much. And I think that's probably because I was, you know, they were drying out too much. When they're not drying out, 
usually everything is fine, they don't rot. So this is no shade on semi-hydro. As I said in the past, it, it can work really well, but honestly, I am just a bit tired of making a mix for Hoyas and semi-hydro, Hoyas that are not in semi-hydro, philodendrons that are not, philodendrons that are. I'm just going to make one mix now, and I think the best these plants can hope for is to give them different fertilizer, because I'm going to be honest, I do fertilize my philodendrons with my fertilizer that I use for Hoyas, and it's not enough for them, so terrible plant parenting here. I do have my mix here, and you can see in the second frame, I do hope my camera is recording. This is a mix of coco peat, perlite, and pumice. And what I did is I used equal parts of coco peat, perlite, and pumice. There is no bark here. I think these ingredients should last. The only thing that can break down here is coco peat, and that doesn't break down super fast, or at least it shouldn't. Plus, this is more a you know, it's a premium cocoa peat, so hopefully it won't break down. And yeah, perlite and pumice, they really, you know, there's nothing there to break down. I do import pumice, and this is the size that I found that works really well. You cannot see that. I think this is like four to eight millimeters. I also used slightly larger one, I think eight to 11. That's just a bit too big, so at that point a rock. I did uh, pot some Hoyas with that and they don't mind, but I don't know, I think this is a better size. And I do use this to make something similar to Pawn, or exactly like Pawn. I use pumice, lava rock, and zeolite, and they are all of similar size to this pumice. So it's actually, uh, the granulation is higher, like they're bigger chunks than in Pawn, or at least I'm told. The reason why I decided to pot this Hoya not in Pawn is because I also want Coco Peat to retain some moisture for this plant. I don't intend to keep this Hoya in a cabinet or in a tent, and you know, in the cabinet, in the tent, Pawn is great. It doesn't dry out as fast, but outside of the tent, you could really water every day, and I know, even if I say I will, I will not do that. So anyways, I did pre-moisten this a bit because it was super dry. I prepared this mix like a week ago. And you can really see here how airy that is, even though there is cocoa peat. And you know, if you try to clump it, it does break apart, which is always a great test. Now my hands are dirty. I mean, they were always gonna get dirty, but I didn't know it was gonna be so soon. <laughs> I'm going to set that aside because what we need to do is release the Hoya from Laka. So I'm going to try to leave it on the trellis. I'm going to do a lazy repot. I'm going to leave everything on the trellis and my hope here is that this is going to come out of the pot right away and I'm going to plump it in the... I was going to say I'm going to put it into another pot but then I realized I didn't bring another pot. At least I brought the plant. I have this old Lekka dumping tub. <laughs> Don't judge. It's, it looks horrible. You can probably hear some Lekka falling out. And as I suspected, some of the roots are rotten. Shut up. I'm going to see if I can untangle this lower portion. I suspect not. I don't even think if I cut the pot that this is going to be very useful because this pot that just has so many of those holes in the bottom and this is completely tangled. So in this case, I would probably cut that root. I'm going to try a bit more to untangle it, but it's probably not gonna work. Cutting the pot also wouldn't work because I would have to cut again in so many places that I would probably damage the roots anyway. You can probably see in the second frame that a lot of the roots are breaking off from that bottom part. But that's when you choose a pot that is not very suitable for this. You're halfway in and halfway out. Also, the reason I'm not really saving these roots is I know they're gonna die back. It's gonna happen when you transition from semi-hydro. Even when you repot Hoyas from semi-hydro to semi-hydro to a larger pot, the roots are just not gonna love it. I did not experience that with other plants like philodendrons and stuff, but with Hoyas, it's definitely the case. Plus, you know, Obavata is a vigorous grower, so it will grow back. 
but you can see there are some rotten roots there. Before I started using rocks, I did notice that in the top zone of the pot in semi-hydro you will get some dieback. And that's really the ugly side of Laka is that when it dries out, it pulls the moisture away from the roots. But some of the misconceptions that I have seen in the past couple of years growing in semi-hydro, you know, that Hoyas won't bloom, that Hoyas, you know, that you have to repot all the time, that the roots rot. It's not true. They can bloom, obviously, in semi-hydro. It's not related to semi-hydro. It's not related to being root-bound. It's related to light, For from what I have been able to observe. Probably sometimes the temperature, but mostly light. And, you know, roots do die back, but it's your own fault. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you that. It's probably because you're not keeping up with semi-hydro, and I don't judge you. Happened to me many a times. Because, let's face it, it's not easy. There are benefits and there are downsides. Just like with every potting mix. And if everything was in semi-hydro, maybe I would stay with it, but it's not. Anyways, we are going to repot it now. I'm going to look for a different pot because, as you can see, these... Not even holes, they're slits. Like in the bottom, they're just not gonna work for me in the future. I found a pot. I'm going to risk a slightly larger pot, even though we lost some of the roots. The reason for that is this plant is not small and it's really stability. If I put this into a size that's smaller than this, it's gonna be too small. Even this one was unstable for it. So yeah, I'm just going to choose stability this time. I really wish that trellis went deeper, but I'm not gonna retrellis it for that reason. Maybe I can just... don't. <laughs> maybe since this part of the Hoya is loose, maybe what I can do is move it higher. I'm going to put some potting mix in. And this is a very light potting mix as well, so I don't think we're gonna rot. At least not because of the mix. I have no idea if you can see this in the other frame. I'm gonna try to angle it a bit differently. Okay, I think that's enough for the bottom. And let's see who there is a bus. Take me to Sweden. I think that's fine. <laughs> I wish I didn't put it so far away. I think this trellis was actually longer. I think I shortened it so it could fit into the other pot. A decision I deeply regret right now. So we're not very stable. It's also very difficult in these pots. Not in these pots, but like in these mixes. To, to stabilize your plant. I'm trying to lift it up. I have no idea what the deal was there. How it was potted in the other pot. But I have new growth coming there. So I would like to keep it above the soil line if possible. I really think this trellis was just too high in the pot because it didn't fit. Am I gonna retrellis the plant? No, I would rather put a couple of stakes in to stabilize it, which I will do. I'm gonna add a bit more. Do a bit of smacking. I don't really like to compact the potting mix. Sometimes I will do it around the trellises though in moss poles because, again, it's a very light mix. I think this skewer will help us. Yeah, I don't think that significantly improved stability, but that's fine. She's wobbly. <laughs> you know what? She will root into the mix and then everything will be perfect again. So, we repotted the... Oh no! Oh, shoot! This is not what I wanted to repot this plant in. Crap! No! I had a different plan! I had a different plan for repotting this plant. Wait, I had a pot for this that my friend bought me last year for my birthday and I was like, I like Hoya Bobata a lot because it's variegated, this variegated version I like a lot and I was gonna put it into this pot. Dang it! I found it! It's this pot that she bought me and I do like the pot I don't want to put pot directly in it because, oh, there is a centipede. Get out. 
Are you dead? You're not dead. You're also not a centipede. So go into the laka. The little guy's holding on tight. Well, you're either on my finger or you're out of the pot. I wasn't gonna put it directly into the pot, but I was gonna find a cover pot, or sorry, a nursery pot that fits perfectly. And you know, something tells me this isn't it. Please fit, please, please. Oh, oh, almost. If I could just squeeze it in. You can definitely see the blue pot, but I think that's like, it's fine. It's not the worst. It fits. I decided this fits. This is a look. There will be something here. This Hoya will grow, a magically will grow a vine that covers the rim. Anyways, it doesn't matter. I'm not bothered by it. I'm more bothered by this trellis that keeps moving. So I think I'm going to try to find another skewer to stabilize it. But again, I'm gonna go shower the plant, water it, once again come back and then I think we will make some hangers and then we will hang some plants and then I will show you the light or I already showed you the light and then I have to rescue a Hoya and then it, it will be done. That's just telling you what will happen so you know. I think we're close to being done. Well, with the video, but not me with the chores. So I want to make these wire hangers. I think now I realize I need more than two. Do I want to make two or I want to make one? I think I want to make one for the video. I make these myself, clearly. But I find them very useful because how I used to hang my Hoyas with these cover pots that I'm about to show you is I used a chain. And that doesn't really work because obviously the chain is flimsy and if you put the vine around the chain, once you take down the hoy, it's not very stable. This stays up, it's kind of like a trellis. Hangers like these are not available here. I know there are plastic ones, but there are no pots that can hang and have the saucer. I don't know why. I'm going to hang this Hoya latifolia that you have seen previously. I have cut it down since it was double the size, but I decided to split it with my friend. I think I traded a cutting and I sold a couple. You know, it's a vigorous grower, that's why I cut it back so much, otherwise I wouldn't do it. It's in a nursery pot in Pawn, and it's growing really well. And this is the cover pot that I want to use. I want to hang it on this, and you know, this is where the board that you can see here comes into play. It's a circle, and I divided it into three sections, and you know, I have marked eight, 10, 12, and 15 centimeters on it, on this line, and then I'm lining up with uh, markings with the rest of the sizes. But anyways, I use this to line up my pot and to draw where I need to, not the drill, but melt, because we melt things. I use a soldering iron to melt. Now I use this sellotape, and any tape will do. This is just the perfect width. I go around the pot, and then below that I can melt. We are going to line up the pot. Typically, you don't want to have water dripping from it. This is a 15 centimeter one. I do have larger ones. I don't know, but I don't, I'm not, I don't think I'm hanging anything larger than 15 centimeters. I think we're lined up. I'm just gonna mark with my marker on the sellotape. I do three marks and then I'm going to melt beneath the sellotape line and be, I'm doing this because I want when I finish my hangers I want the pot to be ready. The second plant I want to hang is a plant I didn't initially want to hang. It's this Hoya Finlay Sony or I at least got it as Hoya Finlay Sony Nova. I do not know whether that is its true identity but you can see how that looks. It's very splashy. It's a very beautiful leaf. So anyways I'm going to hang this plant. These vines I'm going to cut off. The tips died back, the leaves fell off, I think. The baby leaves, so I'm just going to trim it back. This one also died back. I can't remember why, I think I underwatered it. It's a very thin-leaved Hoya. I mean, for Finlay Sony, it is just not very thick at all. I'm not going to show you how to melt pots in the video because I don't have a plug available. 
Well, that lines up perfectly with my circle there. Just mark it. I used to eyeball that where to melt, but obviously when you eyeball things, it doesn't turn out that well, does it? I'm going to melt this off camera and then we will come back with melted pots and we will just start making one more of these hangers. I'm gonna show you how to make one because I really do not want to make any more than that today because we have more things to do after this. I hope I have all the tools necessary. It's the wire we will use, this should be just, I, and you know, I do see why Lady Gaga had that giant orbit ball thingy. The pots are ready, the holes have been melted. The craftsmanship is just amazing. Looks like they came out of a factory. So the next thing I will do is I will make the hanger and I will show you how I do it. I have two different wires. One is just plain metal wire that's easy to work with. Um, but it's also stuck. So this is the chaotic part of the video. The way I make these hangers, and I'm just gonna show you, I measured them about to be, I measured this part of the plastic hanger, and that's basically what I transferred. I have this piece of wire that I used to measure with, so I can get something that's not the same each time, but you know, I, I do still make mistakes when I, when I make these, but you know, for consistency purposes. But anyways, I measure the length <laughs> and it's about here. So I, you know, mark it with my finger. I take my pliers and then I bend. And this way you do get two parts that are the same length because now what you can do is you can take the second part, line it up. It's much more precise than my mistake in the beginning. So, you know, you can line them up. You can see this is where you need to cut. And then you cut. Ideally, you get better pliers than what I have. And then you're left with this. <laughs> okay, so it looks a bit wonky when you cut it. So what you can do now is straighten it out. And this is the part that will hurt your hands. Wear gloves, I don't know why I don't. And I like this coated wire because I think it will last longer. Ideally, I would have gotten the second wire to be coated as well, but they only had this one thickness and I wasn't gonna wait for a long time for the second wire. So I tighten it a bit with the pliers again. It's a lot of back and forth until you get the pieces to look like this. And you will see it's not perfect. We will trim them down later because we will do one more thing that will make stuff a bit wonky. So, you know, you will need to trim up the ends. I'm just gonna put that aside, take my measuring tool again, take the wire. The wire is not aligned. So I will cut it about here. I think that's maybe like two hands worth of space so I can make the hanging, the hanger part, the hook. Now what you do, you just make sure this piece is also straight as much as possible. That's not perfect, but we will have an opportunity. There are many opportunities to fix this and to make it look nice. What I do next is I line up the bottoms and I know I need to bend about here. You can see those two parts, the middle and the back, they meet there. So I go a bit higher because when you make the hoop with the pliers, and I will show you what I mean, if you, if you start bending at that exact spot where the intersection is, this these two other pieces will be too long. So. Let's try not to do that. So anyways, you just bend it um, like that. And then, you know, I started holding it here. Then I moved to this other side so I can do this. 
and then I'm just gonna start bending with pliers and this is gonna be too short it's gonna be a very short hook um, maybe then more than two widths of your hand but anyways I'm gonna try to neaten this up so I can get as small of an opening as possible so squeeze them around a bit and yes you will mess up this coating but you know that's life yeah it's go going to be a bit short but that's fine you make kind of this circle circular thingy and what you will do now is you will take this other part loop it through there like this and voila you got dangly thing this is much better than what it usually is not a lot of cleanup to do at the bottom so what you can do now is you can try to close this hoop it's not necessary because what we will do next we'll make sure these pieces stay together we will take that other wire that is thinner and you can match it you can probably find a green one that's coated as well i couldn't Anyways, what I do next is I take this other piece of wire, I put it through the hoop, like this. It goes through the hoop. I hold it with my pliers, if I can get a... If I can grab this, I hold it with my pliers and I start tightly wrapping it around. And you can do as many as you want. Oops, this usually doesn't happen. Usually it don't damage that part so much. You can see, you can just wrap it around several times. This isn't as tight as I usually like to get it because you know I'm recording so it's a bit more difficult. I usually don't do it like that. I don't have to worry about anyone seeing. So you can cut it here. What I do then, how I finish it off is I cut it here or you can even do it closer. I like to do it here because what I like to do is I like to bend this upwards. And that's about it. What you can do now is make sure that, you know, if you want to straighten them a bit more, you can do that now. Now it's a perfect time to fix any mistakes that you made with this, not in your life. That's not the time to do that now. So what I will do is I will just, you can see that these are not the exact same length. Pretty close, but not the exact same. So I'm just gonna clean that up a bit. This next part, you can do two ways. The way I like to do it is I like to, where's my other hanger? I like to bend the ends so I get something like this. You don't have to go all the way. It depends what you want to do. I'm going to make another piece that I'm going to fit around the pot. So this is easier to remove. What you can do, which I don't think is going to be as easy to remove, is you can just put these straight through the pot. If you have a specific cover pot that you want to use, what you could do is you could just fit this through the hole and you can see, you know, it's, it's possible. But yeah, I don't want to do it. You know, you can do it that way. I don't know how easy that's going to be to do maybe you should do maybe you should do one like that just so I can show you the reason why I don't do it like this like I have an explanation I'm not gonna do it like this sorry I'm not gonna do it for the video because I'm not gonna use it is I want to be able to remove this hanger with the pot with the plant attached maybe I will want to take off the pot to rinse it if there is some water or whatever um, so I would like this to be actually separate. I make S hooks with this other wire. Back to my original plan. What I do next is I take my marker and this is just random. Sometimes I'm, I, I don't actually measure it. I just take and draw a line. And this is where I will bend with my pliers. Decide if you're gonna do above or below that. I usually do below. So then we have consistency.
end, again, this is a bit too short. I usually would like to have a bit more so I can make the hook. I mean, it's going to be totally possible to make the hook as well. You just bend that part and it's done. This one has a longer hook, as you can see, but you can do it with a shorter one, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Now what you can do is you can clean up this uh, before you put it on the pot. You can spread them apart, make sure everything is looking nice and straight. If something isn't, you can bend it also later. It's not a big deal, but yeah, that's how these hangers look like. And I'm going to use this one for the smaller pot. The next thing I like to do is I like to make the S hooks. <laughs> I usually take my finger, measure the length with my finger, and I'll cut the first one like that. The rest of them I will use this one as a guide. And I do three per pot, so I will need six now. And I don't really straighten them. I don't really care. I just do the line them up with the pliers like this and I do one direction and then the other direction and I bend them like that. I guess the, is it, isn't it an S hook? I don't know. I don't go all the way for the other part and you will see why because it's going to be easier to fit on the pot and this wire does look thinner. I mean it is thinner than the other one that you saw me using but it is very much strong enough to hold the pots into place. Nothing is gonna fall, don't worry about that. They didn't fall for me, so they're not gonna fall for you. Now see, that's, that's one, this one is too tight, it's too closed. We need it to be a bit more open so it can go right in. And then when it's in there, you can close it with pliers so it doesn't fall out. Be gentle because you do not want to break the pot. And I do close them around the hanger. So, it looks like this. I will close it with my pliers. It's just not... This is not easy to record. Or I'm, I'm not a DIY channel, so maybe that, that makes it more difficult. We have it hanging. This one is misbehaving. I don't know why. This is what it looks like with the cover pot and yeah, I'm just gonna put this thingy in there. Now I can put my Hoya inside. And there you go, one plant is done. We're gonna do one more. I'm going to hang this one. So I'm just going to put these in. Really should have picked some better specimens to work on in the video, but also, <laughs> Those would be more difficult, more challenging, so always checking out. I think some of these I made when it was very late at night. <laughs> so they, I noticed that some on the day when I was making these last weekend, they didn't come out completely perfect. Oh, something's a bit funky there. Anyways, let's put the Hoya in and maybe I will leave this vine hanging. And then this one I will try to trellis. I will just put a bit of tape there just to indicate to the plant where it's going or where it needs to go. This leaf needs to move here. It's gonna look nicer when it grows up. I'm going to try to hang this one. I think maybe I can hang this one. This however to Salata is I think a great example of how these hoas can look like on these hangers. I think it looks very nice. It's almost like a trellis and it's a bit, someone got a bit too much light there I think, but it does look very very nice there. Now this Hoya Caudata is not on those hangers but it will be. I have to move it because this pot doesn't have the saucer so it will I think end up also looking nice because it doesn't look too terrible like this either. But Hoya Glabra is looking nice, and Hoya Patricia, and I think that in the back, which you can see, is Hoya Blasherna Ezi, or something related to Hoya Blasherna Ezi. And, whoop, there's the cable. I need to do cable management. 
and the ones um, on the opposite side, like that hood and Sephalia, they, they look nice. You can do interesting things with uh, hangers. That is how that looks, and I cannot wait to show you how they look like once they have filled out these hangers. The last order of business is a bit sad. I need to chop down this Ahoy elliptica. It is starting to get yellow leaves and I'm not sure why. I don't know if it's because I transitioned it to Pawn. It was in semi-hydro. I don't think it has root millibugs. And there is no, I can see roots going out from the bottom and you can see it in different frame as well. But I'm not liking the situation so before anything else goes wrong, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unwrap it, detangle it, um, and you can see, oh, I broke a baby leaf there, but you can see that's a lot of bare, naked vine. I am going to leave the base, and this plant didn't look like this. It's just in the recent couple of weeks that it started to lose leaves. I'm not really sure why. I don't think it's the mites. I have sprayed it several times for mites. So before, you know, we lose it, let's try to save it. Yeah, maybe I will spray these with fungicide before I root them, but... Um, anyways, I'm gonna try to take as many cuttings as possible. Basically, uh, I'm going to leave bare vines or... I mean, I'm going to see what we can salvage from the base. I can already see that one base just doesn't have too many things going on, going for it. It's a mess a bit here. I can see that for sure. And for people who are sensitive to this, don't look. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, there comes a time when you need to rescue your plant, and this is the only way to do it. First of all, I'm going to cut this entire vine. You can see that's just so bare and what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave that as a single cutting like that. I'm going to try to root even bare vines. I know it can be done because I did it. I'm going to leave them as is like that and root them a bit later. We need them to dry a bit. Again, another one. Um, I don't think I'm gonna shorten that. This whole vine is gonna lose everything. I see some growth here, growth points. So I'm gonna go all the way to there. This baby leaf, I don't know if it's gonna make it. This vine, it just, it's a very long vine. I'm putting the bare vines aside. I'm gonna see later what I'm gonna do with them. You can see there is a growth point here. So I don't wanna leave this. I'm gonna cut it all the way up to here. And that's what le what's left. Looks pretty scary, I know. So we will see if those will activate or not. If not, we have plenty cuttings to go from or to root from. This is not the prettiest one, but whatever. It's cutting. This one is particularly ugly. That's elliptica for you. I'm going to wash those, make sure they are not bleeding anymore, and then I am going to pot them. I'm going to pot some of them. Maybe I'm going to try to do everyone separately. I'm going to decide. Because I started with one elliptica cutting, so obviously I can do it again. And it's a fast-growing plant. I'm going to choose one. Um, maybe I will pot them separately, and if it proves that all of them are healthy, I'll probably take two or three for myself, and the rest I can trade if it proves that they're healthy. If they're not healthy, and, you know, it's going to take, like, some time to see if they're starting to grow. Uh, I really think that the reason why leaves start to fall off is because of the transition from, from semi-hydro to pawn. Um, but yeah, if I knew it, it was going to take it that hard, I wouldn't do it. 
But anyways, it doesn't matter. I'm going to pot it and I think it's going to be fine because otherwise it does look healthy. I think it's possible that the dry leaf tips that we see are because of the transition. It's just stress. We will see. I will keep you updated on that. I'm not going to pot them in the video because I don't think that's necessary. You know how to plant cuttings. Plus, I will make a separate propagation video. So we will talk about that in the future. But hopefully, you know, it was just the transition that was causing the issues. Okay, that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I have sap on my desk. It looks... Not very nice. It's like black and white sap. It just really shows. Anyways, this month has been a bit different when it comes to uploading schedules, so I do apologize for that. But um, in April, it will be better, I think, hopefully. There were just too many planned chores. I mean, you can see. It was a complete overhaul of the space. Let me know what you think of the hangers, if you would like to try something like that with your Hoyas. And in general, you know, I will show you the hanging space. Let me know what you think of that. I'm going to give you a tour of that hanging space. There are a couple of things that I need, or a couple of more things that I need to complete that. And those things require money. <laughs> so when I collect that, um, I will finish it up and then I will show you. You will get a tour. That's going to be the second part. I don't know, maybe my tent tour will be before that. We will see. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure to do that. Because there are videos here sometimes that can be watched. <laughs> I will see you very soon. Next week there will be a video. I think it's going to be a philodendron repotting. And it's... Mm. It's a big one. No, not that big. It's not. It's not like... It's just long. Like, it's this size. It's, you will see. It's my Dean McDowell. Anyways, that's that. I will see you soon. Have a wonderful day once again, and goodbye. I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. One anonymous patron, Aurelise, Betsy Begonia, Bonnie Harris, Carrie, Cynthia Taylor, Danook Daniels, Estelle, Farah, Houseplant Heather, Hoya Heather, Jack's Plant Journey, Kelso, Kristen Sherwood, Mars B, Martina, Alif Perday, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferrante, Nicole and Caleb of Schleif Tropicals, PJ, Plants by Misha, Rachel Collette Conroy, Robin L. Jennings, Stephanie H2O, Spinach Geek, Tanya, TJWO, Vicky Dingler, Wojta Takac, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, and Zlokob Nipponi. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons, AMP, Angelina Farnan, Brianna Phillips, Catherine G, Kelone, Claudia L, David Condia, Jerry Scarden, Lisa Helling, Lori Murphy, Morgan Kennedy, Nella Nerdy, Kathy, Nikki, Plantolania, Ringlov, Ruby, and Shayla Mason Casper. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Caroline Carey, Erin Keenan, Lauren M, Marissa, Ryan Lambert, and Tang Watana Sriakul. Thank you so much for your incredible support. I hope that you enjoyed these four videos basically merged into one let's be real it could have been four videos i hope you're all well and i hope you're all staying safe i will see you in the next video and i promise it is not going to be four videos merged into one that is all i have to say or i think but before i think of something else it's time to say goodbye <laughs> <laughs>